What's your default mode? How do you usually go through your day? Maybe you run on autopilot, checking off each part of your routine. Maybe you're always set to bristle and get annoyed when things don't go as planned. Maybe you get stuck every time you have to make a choice or try something new. Each of us is wired to respond differently to the things we face each day. But there's one setting we can all choose. If you follow Jesus, you can be certain that God is with you every moment of every day. That means you can take on life with confidence. When you live with confidence, you don't go on autopilot. Instead, you keep your eyes open to see what new opportunities God will bring. Instead of snapping when something unexpected happens, you rely on God to help you respond with kindness and creativity. And when you face tough choices, you rest in knowing God is right there with you, no matter what happens. Confidence comes from putting your life in God's hands and remembering you have a Father who loves you. When you live like that, others can see God at work in you. That's why confidence is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about confidence while we take a look at the story of some people who landed the biggest job in history. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. You look ready to raise your game. 
or go rock climbing. Ooh, I've never been rock climbing, except in Minecraft. I made this whole mountain out of rocks once. There's actually a mountain in today's story. Oh, so we're going rock climbing? I've always wanted to climb in here. Uh, help me. Actually, I have something different we can do with rocks. You know, when I was a kid, I had this thing for rocks. I picked up rocks everywhere I went, but like really big ones. My mom had to keep cleaning them out of my room. These are special rocks. How so? No way you can eat these? Chocolate rocks, oh, this totally raises my candy game. I've got a special candy rock challenge for you. Oh, what are we waiting for? Let's do it! Ready to rock. Great. All you have to do is make one simple choice. Which is? Would you rather? Would you rather have this fabulous dish of chocolate rocks or this brave little single chocolate rock? How is that even a choice? Hold on, let me finish. Or this single rock doubled every day for two weeks. Ah, the plot thickens. Well, how do you choose? Well, how many are in the dish? Be my guest. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three hundred and eight. 309, 310, 311. So, 311 chocolate rocks, or one rock doubled for 14 days. Okay, if this little guy doubles every day for 14 days, maybe that's 100, 150? So which do you choose? Mm, the dish of rocks, because more is more, right? Final choice? Final choice. Final choice? Great. Can I eat them now? Don't you want to see how many you would have got with this one doubled? Sure, why not? Okay, here's our 14 days. We put our single rock right here. And then one times two is two, so two rocks on day two. Two times two is four for day number three. Two times four is eight. Two times eight is 16. Two times 16 is 32. 2 times 32 is 64. Um, hold on. How many rocks is that all together so far? Um, this is 127 rocks. Whew, and we've still got seven days to go. So, 2 times 64 is 128. 2 times 128 is 256 on day number nine. We're gonna need a bigger chart. Wait, hold on. By day nine, there's a total of 511 rocks. That's more than all the rocks in the dish. And we've got five days to go. Well, I clearly crashed and burned on this one. Can we finish now? Actually, no. This isn't even all. I couldn't get enough rocks. Day number 14 would be 8,192 rocks. For a grand total, all added up, of 16,383 chocolate rocks. 16,383 versus 311. I still can't wrap my head around how we got so many rocks so fast. It's called exponential growth. It just means that the more you have of something, the faster it grows. Until you get to some pretty big numbers. Speaking of which, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we start in Matthew, the first book in the New Testament. Matthew was one of the four gospels, the books that tell the story of Jesus' life. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, his very own son, to live among us. But the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. Then, early Sunday morning, Jesus returned to life. Over 40 days, he appeared to more than 500 of his friends and followers, which is where our story starts. Take it away. 
Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Well, Jesus' friends were on the ride of their lives. When Jesus was killed, they were devastated, certain it was the end of everything he stood for. But then, Jesus defeated death. They saw him with their own eyes. It was like Christmas and your birthday and the first day of summer vacation all rolled into one. If death was undone, it meant that everything Jesus said was true. It meant that every wrong would be made right. And of course, they wanted to know when that would actually start. Jesus had told his closest followers to meet him on a mountain in Galilee. There he gave the disciples a breathtakingly big job. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. All nations? This was more than Jesus' friends could wrap their minds around. So Jesus knew they would need help. So on a day while they were all eating together, Jesus told his friends, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. You have heard me talk about it. John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus' friends knew that baptism was a sign of new life and a decision to change, but they had no idea what it might mean to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They probably tried to figure this out as they prepared to meet with Jesus again. So what do you think this Holy Spirit is? And where do we go from here? Jesus can do anything now. He can go anywhere. Jesus' friends gathered around him, eager to learn more. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. There it was again. Jesus wanted his followers to take the story of Jesus from one end of the earth to the other, and somehow the Holy Spirit would help them do it. Jesus lifted his hands and gave a special blessing. Then something incredible happened. He was lifted up toward heaven. The disciples watched in amazement until a cloud hid him from their view. What just happened? Man of Galilee, why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back the same way you saw him go. Still amazed, the disciples returned to Jerusalem. They were so filled with joy that every day they went to the temple to praise God. The end. Wait, Jesus said that he would be with them always, and then he just leaves? Yeah, I know, that can sound confusing, but remember the Holy Spirit part? Jesus said God would send a helper. But we'll talk about that more next time. I'm still stuck on what Jesus said about telling the whole world. Yeah, yeah, it's a big job for sure. So, what's our part in the story? Well, Jesus told his followers, which includes us, to make disciples wherever we go. That just means we tell people about Jesus and try to live like he lived, loving God and loving others in everything we do. <sighs> then other people will want to follow him too. Exactly. But are we supposed to, what, get in a plane and fly all the way across the world to do that? Uh, well, that could be what God wants you to do. But the most important thing is to start sharing about Jesus and living like him now, right where you are. You can tell your friends and your family how Jesus has helped you. And you can love others like Jesus did whenever you're at school. Or at soccer practice. Or summer camp. Then others will see how you act with kindness and respect and confidence and the way you forgive. And who knows, they might want to know where all of that good stuff comes from. They might want to know more about Jesus. And then you can tell them that they are made in God's image. And that Jesus loves them more than they can imagine. Then they can start living with confidence too. See you next time. Here's the thing, share God's love with others. Whether that's close to home or the whole world. Hey, I think I see now what Jesus meant. You know, you tell one person, and then the both of you tell two people, and then they tell four people, and eight people, and 16 people, and 32 people, until you get to how many people are in the world? There are approximately eight billion people in the world. Until you get to eight billion people. That's pretty sweet. Hey, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.